Good evening. Good evening, sir. I hope you are all right. Are you? Yes, sir. Have you had a great day today or was it difficult? <laughs> My God, I expected you know a better answer. I said it has been an exciting day. Have you had a great day? No. Say yes. Oh God, you are lazy guys. Anyway, you know this is the this is in the nature of a day. You generally or you nearly always have a mixed day. There never is a time when you only have difficulties or you only have great joys, but it is your attitude. If your attitude is positive, you will learn from every opportunity. So, let us come back to today. I think so far we have been talking about how to make effective public presentations okay, or how to make effective presentations how to talk to your colleagues who may come from different countries or from different backgrounds, different disciplines, different cultures and how you can still make sense to them. Actually, this is like real life. Two years later or three years later, when you go out to work, you will find that no American company is only American and no Indian company is only Indian. I was talking to the chief of uh, T uh, TCS, Tata Consultancy Services, he is a graduate of this place and uh, the local chief I mean, uh, not Ratan Tata of course. Okay. And uh, he told me that currently TCS employed people from 120 countries. Can you believe that? It is like the United Nations. Okay. So, it is quite likely that the colleague who may be working with you on any project might be from another country, might be from another discipline, not necessarily a graduate in chemical engineering or a graduate in civil engineering or a graduate in sciences. He could be from commerce, from management, from arts, a whole lot of things have changed. And your best bet of being understood by all your colleagues worldwide lies in some very common sense stuff such as speak pleasantly, what else? Speak slowly, come again. Speak slowly. Speak slowly. Speak slowly. Speak pleasantly, what else? What else? be well groomed, prepare well okay, etcetera and you will find that you are able to make sense, you get across to all your listeners. Okay. Uh, I, if, if you know when this institute took fewer students, we used to have more presentations on this course, we used to have up to 7 or 8 presentations by each student, but now with 40 people you know that is not possible. So, we will have only 4 presentations, we have already had 1 and we have 3 more. That should not confine you or keep you from practicing. You can have some practice in your hostel rooms, those of you on this course from the same hostel can get together, speak to one another for just about a minute or 2 minutes, but speak slowly, with a smile, with proper preparation and grooming and you will find that you are learning globally acceptable ways of speaking. Do not keep learning con, you know restricted only to the classroom, learning is an attitude. You must be prepared you must try to learn from any situation, then no constraint, no difficulty can keep you away. Right? Today, I am going to talk about your next topic, please write. I am going to ask you to speak the next cycle of presentations by you. The topic is a civic problem in my place a civic problem in my place. Okay. I am going to tell you today 
uh, what I mean by a civic problem, how you can prepare and what, what you will be evaluated for. What are the three things I am going to tell you about today? Your topic, what is the civic problem? Number one, number two, how you can prepare and number three, how you will be evaluated once again. Okay. What are the three things I am going to talk about? Your topic today, how to prepare, how to prepare, how to prepare, how to prepare and how you will be evaluated. evaluated. Lovely, you are angels, may God bless you. Okay. Right, I am going to ask you to talk about a civic problem. What is a civic problem? What is the word? Civic problem. Civic problem. What is the word? Civic problem. I want to see your lower lip going close to your upper teeth, but not touching it. Civic problem. Say it again. Civic problem. Keep saying. I want you, I want camera to catch your lips. Okay, and I will go around the class. Please do not take me, do not take me on your camera. I want to watch these handsome lips. Okay. Oh, you are not doing, you are cheating. Keep doing it, please. Ah, you are not doing. Why are you not doing? Okay. Keep doing it, please. Do not stop. <laughs> okay, stop. This is as far as we are concerned, as far as learners of English in India and in many Asian countries are concerned, this is a very difficult sound for us. You know, few Indians, few non native speakers get this sound right. Okay, and it occurs very frequently. You know, when we get into the pronunciation part of this course, I will tell you more about it. Okay. At the moment, let us talk about the topic. So, what is a civic problem? What is a civic problem? A civic problem is a man made problem. God did not make these problems, we made them. Say, for example, alcoholism. Okay, what is alcoholism? Anybody please? Anyone who has studied chemistry? Yeah? Addiction to alcohol. Addiction to alcohol. And you know, alcohol, once you have more than a certain level of it in your blood, then your mind goes for a six. You will start behaving like you were a demon or a brute or you know some, some something else lot of domestic violence, you know, man assaulting his wife or children or misbehaving on the street or misbehaving with public servants are attributed to alcoholism. Lot of alcoholics have very bad, you know, health, they suffer from health related problems. In India, we have tried to ban alcohol off and on, but we have not been successful. Similarly, you know, brain drain, child labor, all of these are man made problems. Child labor, what do you mean by child labor? Somebody please. Employing children. Employing children. Uh, under a certain age, how old? Below 14 or below 16, sometimes even below 10, okay. to work for wages rather than be at school, rather than be on the playground, these children are asked to do paid work. Okay. Corruption, a typically Indian problem, what do you mean? What is the definition of corruption? Anybody please? You know, there is a law, it is a very you know, vigorous movement going on in India against corruption just now? Illegal money transaction for once again of a partiality, abuse of power, what else? 
what else? Self-benefits. Yes, all of these are examples, all of these and many more, you know, all of these and many more. You are travelling by railway train, you want a ticket to, want a reserved berth to Sikandrabad and you know, the, you are told no berths are available, but when you give a 500 rupee note, what is the current going rate? Okay. Uh, you get a birth. Okay. So, you know that is that is another instance of corruption. Crime, do you think crime is a man made problem? How many of you believe that? A lot of varieties of crime and if you look at the sociology of criminals, look at their social <coughs> background, many of these people quote unquote criminals. Have you ever been to a prison? I mean as a visitor, okay. maybe you know some day, some 26th January, 15th August uh, prisons are open and you can visit them. Go and see them, talk to the prisoners inside and you will find that a large number of them come from lower classes of the society. You know there are hardly the case that there is a prisoner who comes from very rich plus you know. Yeah father flying in chartered aeroplanes and the boy or the girl in the prison, hardly the case. It has, a, it, it has almost a direct socio-economic link. Look at some other kinds of problems, scarcity of drinking water. In Madras in the year 1940, the decade before India became independent, there was no problem of drinking water. Madras had enough, Chennai had enough for itself. Hyderabad, Sikhadrabad had no problem of drinking water, Bangalore had no problem of drinking water, Delhi had no problem of drinking water, but today I do not know. This institute spends quite a huge amount of money buying water every month in the department. Then you have hostels. Do you also buy drinking water? Okay. Now, how suddenly, what happened? Do we have less rainfall, where did we go wrong, what mistakes have we made, so that you know, waste, rising population, pollution, lots of other things you know, lots of other things. You know increasingly declining or falling underground water level, that is another reason, abuse, misuse, contamination of water. You know, a lot of chemical industry on the banks of the rivers, Godavari, Kaveri, Krishna, they were all great mighty rivers. Today, they are pathetic, sewage bearing canals. What went wrong? Okay. So, the, these are examples of you know uh, declining supply of drinking water. Things like you know social problems like dowry, you know typically Indian problem, drug abuse, drought, power shortage. Do you believe? How much of India do you think has you know this kind of the power that we have now, the electricity? How much of India has uninterrupted power supply? Make a guess. Speak slowly, raise your hands so that the camera can pick up your face. Raise your hands, please, and speak. This is a course in spoken English. How many people would like to answer this question? How much of India has? Okay, one by one. So, we will begin with you, the last bench, please. Less than 10 percent. Less than 10 percent. Do not say percent. Less than 10 percent. What is it? Percent. 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 Say it again. Percent. Yes. Less than 15 percent. Less than 15 percent, okay. Less than 10 percent. Less than 1 percent. Okay. How much of India even today does not have electricity at all? Uh, not really, but you know it comes to about 30, 35. I am from among that, you know, those 30, 35 percent villages and you know regions which even today, you know, because we do not have electricity, we do not have computers, we do not have television, we do not have internet, we do not have a number of things. Okay. Phones arrived only very recently, because now 
mobile phone towers have diesel operated generators for power supply. Otherwise, you know, so the question is can we find enough electricity for all of us? Okay? This is a huge, huge engineering challenge. Can we do something such that we can have inexpensive power supply for everyone? Okay? Similarly, there is electricity wastage. Okay? Go to any market or supermarket, huge, you know, enormous amounts of electricity just to decorate one mannequin. You know what a mannequin is? Dolls dressed like, you know, lovely girls or handsome boys, okay? and you will have four lights or four huge neon bulb, bulbs or vapor lamps illuminating that mannequin. Why? You know, Gandhi said, do not build a statue for me until you have lighted a lamp in every home. Do you think that is being done? Some B.Tech here calculated some years ago on this course that if all Gandhi statues were to be kept without lamps, a, so many hundreds of villages in India would get uninterrupted power supply. So, you know these are man made problems and we must do something about them. Similarly, you know floods, it is in the nature of rivers that in rains they rise, but it is not in the nature of ri rivers that you know their water goes and stays in the villages, in towns and cities for months and weeks. That is because of the engineering disasters, the kinds of dams and barrage we have built. We have stopped the flow of rivers. We have interfered with the nature. We are too clever by half and we think we have overpowered nature. We have not. What we have done is we have made the lives of poor people, less powerful people than us miserable. Okay? You can make presentations on that. Or garbage. How much garbage do you think a city like Chennai generates in one day? Make a guess. Those who have not spoken. One ton. One ton? So, 96,000 ah. tons. 96,000 tons. Okay. How much garbage does your hostel generate? Okay. You can make a, do not take entire Chennai if you pick up a topic like garbage. Talk about your own hostel. Talk about garbage disposal. How much garbage you generate and how it is managed. Okay. Talk about that, please. Or globalization. You know, globalization is a wonderful word when it comes to selling cars. It is a marvelous word when it comes to selling mobile phones. But is it a marvelous word when it comes to selling local products from villages of Andhra, Telangana, Bihar, Orissa, Bengal, Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand, China, Uzbekistan? What happened to their artisans? What happened to the local samosa makers when you began eating those pizzas and burgers and ruining your intestines because they all carry preservatives okay? or inadequate housing? Think of a material, a building material like cement. Okay? What kind of pollution does cement industry cause? What was the building material before cement, before reinforced concrete came? How many of you from civil engineering? Raise your hands. Okay. Ask your professors to tell you what was the material used for building Golconda or Fort St. George or Taj Mahal? Did they use ACC cement? Did they use reinforced concrete? What did they use? they use some common sense, abundant common sense, lime. Lime has the greatest agglutinative power. It is the best glue you have. Okay? 
least polluting, but we are not doing that. As a result, our houses are inexpensive, polluting, and everyone does not have houses. You know, lots of people in the metropolitan cities, Bombay, Calcutta, Delhi being the highest, have people without homes, even in the cold of winter, in the rains of monsoon, and in the heat of summer. Okay. That is again a man made problem or information overload. There are schools in Andhra, I know of Hyderabad, where class 3 student has a class in computer science. Do you believe it? Or illiteracy. None of us here has a right to earn any salary until we have taught another fellow person, because each of us, each of our keep, your education is being subsidized by every Indian, including those who did not get a chance to go to school. This is again a man made problem. Okay. And do you think illiteracy is a problem? Yes or no? Yes. How? How does it hurt? Tell me. How does it hurt? Underdeveloped people do not know new ways to come up in life. Number they one. remain in their cocoons. Number one. Anything else? They do not know their rights. They do not know their rights. Yes. They are like passengers who have paid for the tickets, but have not got one. Imagine yourself at the airport at the Chennai Central Railway Station, you pay for the ticket, but you do not get it. Okay. They are deprived okay. and it is our duty to do something for them or overpopulation okay. or pollution, pollution of many kinds, pollution of not one, not just air pollution of course, which is terribly bad. I hope and pray that you do not get a job in Chennai, in Bangalore, in Gurgaon, in Noida, in Bombay, in Pune, in Delhi. <laughs> I hope you get a job in Kammam, Mahbub Nagar, because they have good air okay. or water pollution. You know, all Chennai's water bodies are polluted, contaminated because of chemical industry. All our river, Jamuna in Delhi is dead. Okay. Our noise pollution for the next four days, many of us on this campus will have huge cotton balls in our ears. The kind of noise you will create here. Do you know how they hurt the local animals? This is supposed to be a national park. Have you ever imagined? I do not want you to feel guilty. I want you to do something about it. Okay. The loudspeaker was meant public announcement systems were meant to convey information to a crowd. They were not designed to make the lives of innocent people miserable. I live next to a temple, you know, every morning, evening, you know, the same bhajans. I have begun hating those bhajans. You know. They do not bring in some new bhajans, bring some new songs, you know, they play the same songs. And it is not just a temple, church, mosque, everyone now does that without imagining how high decibels affect people. Somebody some years ago did a piece of project on, there is a place in Chennai called Nanganallur. It is near airport and they found that a lot of children there had problems with sleeping, hearing because aircrafts constantly flew over those areas. And do you imagine the kind of noise a jet engine produces? It is unimaginable, but airport people are well protected because they have sound proof glasses. How about those boys and girls, old people, sick people who do not have that kind of glass? Are you with me? Yes, you know what I am trying to tell you is if you look around, there are a variety of problems man made problems, not God made problems. God created a wonderful universe, but we have sort of tampered with them and we have uh, tampered with it and we have created a variety of problems. I want you to take up one of these problems, any one. Okay. I have given you a long list here. I will give a copy to Kiran and to Arun and I will request them to copy it to you. 
but take any any of these problems or anything else you know which is a civic problem a man made problem you know i have already talked about a lot of things poverty in my opinion no problem is bigger than poverty poverty is the mother of problems in sanskrit there is a saying that a hungry man is capable of any crime bhuvukshitam kim na karoti papam one whose stomach is empty bhuvukshitam one who is hungry kim na karoti papam what kind of sin can he not do okay is it not our responsibility to do something about it similarly there are problems like terrorism traffic related problems you know in many cities even medium sized towns and cities now have traffic jams traffic does not flow freely you have problems like unemployment urbanization villages are becoming increasingly empty i grew up in a village and when i into i went to a school i had more than 40 boys my age group today when i go back to village even last month december i was there in my village you don't find any boys there no boys no girls you find only old people and empty houses next vacation winter or summer go to your father's village i know many any one of you from a village no you know your father your parents are from a village are you also from a village do you still go back to your village okay take some of these people to your village <laughs> okay we your friends guest i am sure you can manage make them work don't give them food for free let them clean the cow shed and uh, you know the streets etc etc okay but all these you know villages getting empty cities getting crowded all that is a problem talk about any one of these problems okay do you have any questions about the topics anybody please are we together yes or no yes, sir. lovely okay how you know these are some problems illustrations this is flood my part of the country regular visitor all i can tell you is that life surrounded by floods is a misery unending unending misery you know may god keep you away but as engineer or engineering scientists it is your responsibility to do something about it garbage what you and i throw you know the slum dog millionaires pick up for a living and yet the garbage does not disappear or you know boys with a begging bowl nothing could be a greater shame no matter how many times we go to the moon or to the jupiter unless this photograph disappears i don't think we can call ourselves civilized what are the constraints what do i want you to do please make a note i want you to speak for 90 seconds okay all in only 90 seconds take you can speak up to 89 or 91 but when i say 90 seconds it does not mean 100 seconds it does not mean 80 seconds you will lose marks if you close much before your time you will lose marks if you exceed time right i have you know i'm going to time you like i did last time you have only 90 seconds please prepare don't just leave it to the last minute don't tell yourself i will stand and look at the timer and stop you will not be able to say all if you speak without rehearsal without preparation you know your presentation will not be effective do at least two or three presentations in your hostel among your friends so that you know you have some practice in the coming weeks you know when you have presentations i will invite you to use powerpoint slides to illustrate your points and because you have 90 seconds i am going to allow you to use up to three powerpoint slides no more it is your choice you can use only two that is that is allowed but not more than 
only three slides each of you. How you can get them here, how you can load them, I will I'll, I'll talk about all that later outside the class. Okay? I may request our colleagues in this studio to help us with that, but I expect you to uh, give them your slides at least 24 hours before, please make a note, at least 24 hours before you are you use them. So, Arun and Kiran will give you a schedule on the mail telling you who speaks when. Shall we do that Arun and Kiran? The two of you can get together, I can leave the attendance register with you and you can tell everyone uh, when they you know their day and time etcetera, etcetera. And accordingly they must give their slides to our friends here uh, before they come to speak, so that we can't we, we do not lose time. Are you with me? Okay. How can you use these three slides? You can the use these three slides in the following manner. At least one slide must show your place, you know, you, since you are talking about a civic problem, okay. since you are talking about a civic problem, you know, show your place on a, on a map. Suppose you are talking about the problem in your hostel, then take the map of the city of Chennai and show your hostel on that map. If you are talking about a problem in Visakhapatnam, take the larger map of India and show where Visakhapatnam is. You can have a city map of Visakhapatnam and you can show, show the location of your place. We may not be familiar with all the places, but you do not have to take it for granted you can use a map and Google map usually you know every place looks like every other place. So, unless you have the entire universe, unless you have a lot of time, I think it is difficult to look at the peculiarity of your place. So, do not uh, I will say strongly suggest use a non Google map. Okay. Your second slide must quantify the problem in the form of a table or chart. Let us take a problem. Let us say at you are talking about the problem of drinking water in Jamuna hostel or anybody from Jamuna hostel here. Okay. Oh no, Jamuna hostel is a great hostel. Let us talk about Ganga hostel. Anybody from Ganga here? Okay. Do you have problem of drinking water there? Okay. Which hostel? Tapti? Okay, right. Since nobody from Tapti here, let us talk about that. Some of these hostels on this side of the campus, Tapti, Brahmaputra, uh, Kaveri, Krishna, they have problems of drinking water. Now, how would you quantify this problem? Okay. Rack your brains. Scratch your brains and tell me, how would you quantify the problem? There are many ways. One way is, how much water do you think ordinarily an individual human being in Chennai would require on a daily basis? 4 liters? 2 liters? Let us say an average of 3 okay, for drinking. Then you have other purposes. Okay? You have water to wash, water to cook, how much would you need for that for individual. So, quantify okay? and you will reach so many thousands of liters per day or you know in a city like Chennai, you talk in terms of MLD. What is MLD? You talk in terms of What is it? Yes. In your case, in the case of a hostel, you can talk about thousands of liters per day. So, for example, you know a truck load, a tanker load. How much does a tanker carry? Yeah, a smaller tanker and a bigger six wheeler. 6 will carry 12,000 liters. 
So, how many you know you can accordingly quantify the point I am making is there is no problem there is no problem which engineering science which engineering science cannot quantify. Let us take another problem Sarang is about to begin tomorrow tomorrow afternoon okay, day after tomorrow once again sorry. Uh, how much garbage shall we have here? Can you quantify? Do some homework. Sorry, do some work now. Use your pen, paper, and pencil and tell me, tell me that at the end of these four days, this campus will witness x kinds of garbage and x tons of or y tons of garbage. Everybody, please take a minute and tell me. This requires, this is where your analytical skill is called. I may call one of you to the board and I may ask you to tell us how you reached those conclusions. Okay, please come. Okay, or tell me from there so that we don't lose time. Is this or or this? Ten thousand kg. <laughs> Let us write it clearly 10 k kgs, 10,000 kilograms. Let us write it again. Is it okay? Right? Any other guess? Any other guess? Come on, let us see, please. The classroom is the only place where you can make a mistake and yet not suffer, yet prosper. Tell me. 2000. 2000. Daily or? Daily. Right? How much is yours? So, cut it into you are saying right. Okay. Any other guess out of any other guess which is very different? How did you reach this calculation? Can you can you stand up and explain? Uh, Tell your class. I calculated how many uh, how many people will I calculated how, how many, many people, people would be coming to Sarang and uh, how much of food uh, grub they would eat and so, uh, Not grub, so much how much food yeah. okay. how much of food they would eat and buying stuff etc and uh, how much garbage they would throw uh, like paper plates wrappers etc etc so i calculated at least per day uh, they would be and throwing around uh, half kil uh, half kg of uh, wa um, waste each visitor. Yes. Okay. And accordingly. So, say um, there are around 8,000 students in IIT Madras, and if 8 more thousand um, stu visitors come, including the faculty, etc., etc., okay. and uh, they would make around, say, some 20,000, 16 to 20,000, and they would make, and if, if I multiply, then I would get 2,500 kilograms. Okay. Anyone else who would give us share your basis? Who else said four thousand? Please, can you explain? Sir, Please, shall we listen? Suppose there are eight thousand prominent men in the campus for the for that day, 
and uh, for the maximum let's since we have taken prominent men we take the maximum amount they can dispose so it's about half kg per person so half kg per person and 8000 people so i get 4000 kgs daily the point that is to be made you know that is that is being made all i'm trying to tell you is that there is no problem which cannot be quantified do you agree now you can do two things you can go to the website and take big problem pollution in chennai that will be a wonderful training in copying okay that will not be your work try and generate to take a smaller unit take your hostel your village your street in your town don't take all of chennai just take gandhi sale okay just take one part of a city or one part of a street on this stretch so much okay or in my hostel or in my wing of my hostel how many wings are there in your hostel um, ten. Ten. how many wings are there in your hostel ten wings ten okay so take one wing and see how much garbage we generate how we can dispose them better etc quantify the problem okay there is no problem which cannot be quantified so you know i am going to evaluate you for so another slide must quantify the problem in the form of a either a table or a chart or a graph depending upon what you are taking you must talk about that right uh, the remaining slides you may either show a photograph you know i showed you the photograph photograph of poverty photograph of garbage photograph of floods okay recently in japan you know they had tsunami they had thought that no tidal wave can be higher than 10 meters they built cooling towers 13 meters but you know how much what was the height of the tsunami wave in japan this time 30 three zero okay 30 meters okay so no you know technological arrogance is nothing when confronted by nature's calamity okay so you may also show on one slide a photograph concerning the problem or the place okay and the last slide any other thing i am giving you three slides plus a map show a map the location of your place and then on one slide quantify the problem if you like show a photograph and third slide anything else your option okay all you have is how many seconds how many 90 it is 90 how many 90 seconds okay you know numbers even just now we spoke and numbers are a big thing in english in any language engineers talk in numbers engineers talk in drawing and drawings again have numbers they have length they have points they have breadth okay and many time many on, on many an occasion you will find that our pronunciation of numbers is not quite correct i like you to speak from you know what, what let us let us have a test what is this and what is this 30. there's a difference here this is emphasized here this is emphasized this is 13 what is this 30. and what is this 30. and what is this 90. and what is this 90. and what is this 50. and what is this 50. and what is this and what is this? It is 50. And what is this? What is this? 40. Make it long. What is this? 40. Let your lip come close to the upper teeth. 40. What is it? 40. But this is? 40. This is? 17. What is this? But this is? 70. 70. What is this? 70. 70. 70. 
Okay. So, you know small things, it is small nuts and bolts that make a smart machine. In non-smart machines, you will have loose nuts and bolts, they may be creaking, but in good machine, all of these things should be in place. So, I will say 1, 2 and you will follow me. Please follow me. 1, one 2, two three, 3, 4, Ten. Begin with 1. 1. one go on. 2, 3, 4, 5, Slowly. Once again, please. One, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven eight, nine, ten. These small things, letters of the English alphabet, when we get into the pronunciation part, you will see that 90 percent of the words we use on a daily basis are the same, they do not change. They are numbers, auxiliary verbs, letters of alphabet, names of ordinary things that we use daily. But because we pay inadequate attention, we are not understood. Okay? How would you be evaluated? You may either show a photograph related to the problem in your place or have another slide to show another aspect of the problem. In this cycle, I do not expect you to propose a solution to the problem you are only describing the problem, a civic problem in my place. Any problem? Okay. Do you understand? Yes, yes or no? Everybody please. Yes, yes, sir. How will you be evaluated? Your presentation will, will be evaluated for the following. Please write number 1 and out of 20, I am going to have 10 marks for this. If you spoke slowly, you will lose 10 right away no matter how good your English is. If you spoke rapidly, sorry, not slowly. If you spoke rapidly, you will lose 10 marks right away. Okay? I am going to have 50 percent. How much? 50 percent. You know, this is a stress here. They say it slowly. This is per, but this is cent. What is this? Percent. What is this? Percent. So, 50 percent I am going to have for your slow tempo. Then, a stage manners, grooming, eye contact, and all that. Okay? And contents. Did you tell me something new and original about the place you had taken, or was it just cut, copy, paste, and nothing? Slides where are they well done? I okay, will tell you about the slides a little later. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Have a good evening.